Welcome back and Deja Hao, that's Mandarin for hello everyone. In the United States, more than 300 million Chinese citizens are said to speak English, but only about 60,000 Americans speak Chinese. That imbalance appears to be changing though. Today, with China emerging as a top economic power, a growing number of Americans believe learning Chinese is more important than learning Spanish, the second most spoken language in the United States. America's Now correspondent Mike Kirsch has been on top of this trend and reports his findings from San Diego, California. In San Diego, California, every Thursday night at this local tea shop, gather Americans like Donna and Roger, and Jeff and Jesse, and Kyle. Hearing them speak to me is like watching an American movie dubbed over in Chinese. Across the United States, more and more Americans from college students uh, to middle-aged adventurers. Well, I know Ni Hao. Hello. Xixian, thank you. Are learning to speak Chinese. Many getting their feet wet at informal Chinese language meetup groups like this one. I think I said my Kung Fu teacher The reason why I learned is very different from the reason that everyone else learned. I mean, it was I learned by mistake. Long story short, Jesse says he took up Chinese in college after saving a friend from drowning and celebrating too hard that night and the next morning. I got very drunk and then I slept in. I thought that the next class after the first class in the morning would also be Spanish. It was Chinese. I sat in it anyway. And uh, the teacher said that you don't have all that conjugation, like uh, blah, 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 and all that stuff. Said the words are never change. The tone changes, but a tone change means it's a different word. It doesn't mean that it's a different conjugation. He says Chinese turned out to be much easier than learning Spanish. He now works in China most of the year for an American firm. It's a language that allegedly 1.4 billion people in the world can speak, 1.3 something billion people. Um, and it's, it's kind of integral to understanding the culture. Language and culture are kind of inextricably connected and it's kind of very important to understand one and understand the other. So because they're so, China is such an important power right now in the world, I feel like understanding the language can be very beneficial. Learning Chinese in America has become far more than a hobby. In the San Diego suburb of Lakeside, Riverview Elementary has developed a cutting-edge Chinese language immersion program that parents as far away as 40 miles have enrolled their children in. What did you say? I said, my name is Leah, I'm eight years old, and my mom and I, I learned Chinese because my mom wanted me to. Children like seven-year-old Hudson here are immersed in Chinese for most of the day to gain an edge for his future, says his mom, Kelly Morton. There's no inhibitions about it. If someone speaks Mandarin and we meet them on the basketball court and they realize that this little you know, Caucasian boy can speak Mandarin, um, it seems to be interesting to them. and. And I, it almost looks like we're just bridging communities and, and making relationships. It's just really, it's, it feels good. The Chinese language immersion program here at Riverview Elementary began two years ago with 50 students. Two years later, more than 300. It used to be primarily only expensive private schools in California offering Chinese. At Riverview, a public school, says Principal Olympia Kariakides, Chinese immersion is free. There is no fee. It's a free public education, and our parents are thrilled with it. The school district superintendent, Brian Bristol, says Chinese immersion programs like this are part of a growing trend. 
I really predict that in the next 10 years, you're going to see uh, an explosion of these types of programs, for not only in San Diego County, and not only in the state of California, typically throughout the United States. Many kids here also learning Spanish with just a click of their brain. I decided to take my first Chinese language lesson from an eight-year-old named Frank, fluent in Chinese and Spanish and English. Take your pick. Yes, and I'm, I think I'm going to learn French next, I think. Can you teach me a few things in Mandarin? If you tell me what you want to... If I tell you, okay. Uh, let's start off with the easy one. How do I say... How do I say? 我怎么说? What's a mush That's how do you say, how do you say? That's an important question, isn't it? If you're learning a language, how do you say? Yes. Okay, what's a mush what's a mush Did I say it right? Mm, no. I have a long way to go, don't I? What's a mush What's a mush Say it with me slowly. Wa. Wa. Zama. Zama. Shua. Shua. What's on my schwa? Yes. Thank you. Correct. Correct. The emergence of Chinese language in American society setting a new tone for U.S. China relations. A language in which tone, how you pronounce the word, says teacher Li Luj, we have four tones. means all the difference in the world. Ma means mom. But um, ma means horse. So it's so different. So they have to be careful they don't call their mother a horse. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How do I say we don't have any more time for this story? How do you say goodbye? Zai Jian. Zai Jian. Zai Jian. Frank. Zai Jian. Zai Jian. Here at CCTV America, we've been taking Mandarin classes as well. And we'd like to thank our teacher, April Wu, for her patient instruction and dedication. Shishi Laoshi and Chunjie Kuai Le. That brings us to the conclusion of our broadcast this week. You can find us on the web at cctv-america.com. And you can also find us on Facebook at cctvamerica.com. For America's Now, I'm Elaine Reyes. From all of us here in Washington, thanks for watching. Thank you.